What's the word, y'all? Quick, quick reaction to the OKC Thunder um, winning game number one versus the Dallas Mavericks. The final score ended up being 117 to 95. Defense is just, just elite. And I'm not here to super overreact to a game number one. Ah, but I'm a little bit afraid for the Dallas Mavericks. It is just game number one. It's a seven-game series. The OKC Thunder had to replicate this three more times. But OKC looked like the better team across the board today. And if you're Dallas, you don't really like that. But let's start off with the team that ended up winning. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I love when the OKC Thunder are a good basketball team. Their home crowd is electric. Everybody buys into anytime Lou Dort do something, you're here to lose. Or anytime J-Dub do anything, they barking. Or everybody's buying into the free t-shirts you get from just being in the arena. It's it's a perfect atmosphere. And it's I just like seeing young players defy the odds. This is not a team that is, that is supposed to be the one seed. Nobody projected it. And here they are as the one seed. And they're undefeated so far in the playoffs there's only a few teams in basketball that's undefeated in the playoffs it's the minnesota timberwolves who have an extra game on them and then it's the okc thunder it's kind of crazy to think that all of the teams all of the teams all of the teams left in the playoffs i'm going to double check this because maybe i'm forgetting about somebody are led by relatively young stars right Rel relatively <laughs> Jokic is like 29 so we're not counting that as young anymore but relatively young like the the 30 and up group is all gone it's it's shay it's luca it's Anthony Edwards. It's Jokic again, the oldest of the bunch. It's Tatum, I guess. Is Tatum the best player on the team? No, I'm, I'm joking, Tatum. You know, you're my guy. Um, it's Donovan Mitchell. It's Tyrese Halliburton? Pascal Siakam? Is it Miles Turner? I guess you can argue anyway. And then Jalen Brunson. Again, it's just kind of weird to see some of the players that we used to seeing in these spots not be in these spots. But the OKC Thunder were phenomenal tonight. And for the majority of this, they were in this game, winning this game. And that was before J-Dub did anything. Like, J-Dub left end of second quarter with a little bit of an injury, and I was a little bit afraid for it. He came back, and then it wasn't until the fourth quarter where he really got it going. So his box score of 6 of 15, that doesn't tell the true story of what J-Dub did in this game today. I thought Chet Holmgren was amazing as well, uh, protecting the paint, putting his body on the line, and, and doing great things. Shea, obviously, is going to do Shea things, got to the free throw line a ton. And that's just part of ball. I like I, I just... One of the worst things I can do is go to Twitter immediately after a loss to see what people are thinking. That is the only thing people care about. Like Shea getting to the line 13 times the reason they lost this game. The Mavericks did not lose this game because Shea got to the free throw line 13 times. Spoiler alert, they lost it. Majority because their best player, one of the best players in the world, a top three playing MVP, my, probably number, number two in MVP, had a sticky game. And the injury that Luka's dealing with it looks worse than what I anticipated. I watched the entirety of last series, obviously. I saw that he was banged up, and I saw that he said after game, before game number five, it wasn't for it being a playoff game, he would be sitting and resting or whatever, whatever. I understand that. But that sprained knee has him moving differently, and this is not a player that's notorious for being very quick anyway. <laughs> it's, like, it's just, a, it was a really tough Luka game. And if Luka's performance to this caliber, they have no chance. Right. In order for them to win this series, they need Luka to be the playoff performer we've seen him be in previous years. They need Kyrie Irving to continue to do his stuff because Kyrie did not have an, a phenomenal game, but he had his moments like he usually does. And I still believe that Kyrie Irving is really sitting in that chair and, and attempting to play defense. And last series, he's phenomenal defensively and game number one here. He had a couple plays where I'm like, OK, that was from him from last series. But if Luka's not, if the, if the head of the snake is not hissing, then the whole snake may be dead. That's all I'm saying. Um, but let's go back to the Thunder. We'll, we'll get back to the Dallas Mavericks. Um, one of the main things about the OKC Thunder where people are afraid to pick them is obviously the youth. That's a big thing. But they continue to do great things even though they're young. But the second thing was the lack of interior presence and so on and so forth. They, they dominate the glass in this one. They dominate the glass. Who would have thought? They dominate the glass. So that all of that is overblown. I mentioned it before, but part of the reason why OKC's offense is so good is the fact that they do have all of this space. Well, majority of times they're playing four shooters and sometimes it's completely five shooters on the court, right? Josh Giddy is a guy that nobody really trusts, but in tonight's game, oh, he didn't hit one. What am I remembering? I thought I remember him seeing him hit one. But anyway, um, everybody else on the team is a shooter. Like, some of them won't be a respected shooter, but they're a good shooter. Like I've said, I've always said that there's two different kinds of shooters. There are people that can shoot shots and there are people that are respected. And Lou Dort is two or five for three. He's been a 40% three-point shooter all season long. He's a good three-point shooter, but he's not respected, right? So a lot of his three-point shots are wide open. And if he gonna hit 40% of them, you, you take it every single time. Like Isaiah Joe is a good three-point shooter and he's also respected where other teams are not helping off Isaiah Joe very often and so on and so forth. But they... They shot the ball well. They defended amazingly. They out-hustled the Dallas Mavericks. They were better on the glass. And the one thing about OKC 
that nobody's really talked about. I mean, I guess I'm not thinking about uh, or reading or listening to other people's podcasts and stuff. They are five points better defensively in this playoffs than anybody else. Anybody else. You remember the last, you remember the series, the four five matchup out East? Well, was the the Orlando Magic versus the Cavaliers, and they had multiple games be with under under a hundred points per. Let me let me show you these stats from the OKC Thunder and how good this defense has been in the playoffs. And this is accounted for today's game too. Five and zero. The offense is ninth in the league. Okay, uh, that that's fine because like Sacramento's above them, Atlanta's above them. These are teams that aren't even necessarily in the playoffs. So really, they're bumped up to like seventh, right? But they are the number one defense by five-ish points, four and a half points. They're the number one defense in hoops. And you see that in real time. And they asked Shea Gilles Alexander about it. He talked about how they have so many um, so many people that are are in the same mind frame. They have so many great perimeter defenders. And they have the big fella down low with Chet Holmgren who's willing to get dunked on if necessary. Their goal is to prevent you and shut off the water. And they've done that through the first five games. And this, this Dallas Mavericks team, obviously... The team with a lot of firepower, and most of that is between their top two guys, and they were able to contain those dudes. If Luka is moving like this, this series, where I picked the OKC Thunder to win candidly before the series started, I, I think that they're the better team. Again, I do have my reservations about them being so young, but the, no part of this season have they looked th their age. And we're five games into the playoffs. They did not look their age. They, it would have been very okay for them in the last series when they went against the Pelicans, who were missing Zion, but been very easy for them to lose a game. Just a young thing to do. Just lose a game. Even though they were the more talented team, the playoffs are the playoffs. Nope. They had game number one where the Pelicans almost won it, but then Shea turned into a Superman, hit a big shot, and then boom, 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 they win that one. They have not looked their age one bit this entire playoff run so far. So that was one of the reasons why I picked them over the Dallas Mavericks. I did not expect that Luka Doncic injury to look as bad as it did. I still, I, I understand the Tim Hardaway Jr. minutes because he's similar to what like Buddy Hill did in game number six for the Philadelphia 76ers. We know he's a streaky shooter. And hell, if he got it one day and we give him the opportunity, he could win us a game. But today, he had the one possession. He took a he took a three-point shot like with 18 seconds on the, on the shot clock. They get offensive rebound and swing back to him. He didn't even think about swinging it to the left. Another shot. It's 17 minutes minus 13, 105 from, from the field. It was just a it was a rough watch if you're the Dallas Mavericks. The good thing about it is a seven-game series, and series aren't lost in game number one. You really, really want Luka Doncic to get healthy. I mean, the best thing about it, it was like rest versus rust. And the OKC Thunder have been resting for the last, what, week or so, basically. And obviously, uh, Dallas had to go a little bit longer in their previous series. So the next time they play against each other is going to be on Thursday. So they don't even get an extra day. And uh, Luka needs to get there. And that's not in his control, right? He can't bionically make his knee better. But because his defense is not good normally like he's had his time don't get me wrong in that game number one versus the the clippers he sat in that chair they shot two of 17 against him i understand that but if he's having a sprained knee and he's notoriously not a great defender it's just worse and worse and worse okc is going to continue to do that thing i believe we'll see what happens they say the series doesn't start until a road team wins we saw a series in the first round where a road team didn't win a single damn game so who knows uh, I guess we have to wait and see. Is there any other talking points in this one? Oh, Aaron, Aaron Wiggins. Aaron Wiggins. The goal of Coach Mark Dayton all. So let me see. Um, to play a real one, two, three, four, five, a real 10-man rotation in the playoffs. Game number one. 10-man rotation. Other teams across basketball, Tom Thibodeau, is running a five-man rotation. Uh, Mark Dayton all is like, hey, we have a deep roster. Like Isaiah Joe could come in and hit us, hit two threes. Kaysen Wallace could play great defense. Wiggins came in in that second quarter, and I think he went into halftime with the second most amount of points behind Shea Gilles Alexander. Like they have that type of impact. And I don't believe Gordon Hayward has scored in the playoffs yet. I'm going to double check. <laughs> he has not scored in the playoffs. I swear I've watched all these minutes and I ain't seen him attempt a shot. Oh, he attempted one today. All right. All right, Gordo, do your thing. But they feel so confident in who they are that they haven't needed to shorten the rotation while majority of the other teams across basketball have. Like, uh, we saw a eight-man rotation today, really, from Jason Kidd. You know, that's pretty traditional for a playoff series. Nope, Mark Dayton, I was like, all of our young guys can hoop, so we're going to let them hoop. Leave a like, subscribe, let me know what you think about this series. Are we overreacting? Are we not? Luca? whew.